All right, this is our scale binder. All piano students work through scales and chords at some point in their piano lessons. Um, two years ago, a lot of our students got a scale binder. Um, so some of you already have this, some of you will be getting this in the near future. But your scale binder is just in a little white binder. We like, to, we like for you to have some sticky notes, so grab some of those. And this is where we kind of chart where you're at on the scale journey. We can send this out to any of you that need a new copy. But the binder basically is gonna go through all of our major scales and the relative minor. And so with that, the students who've already worked through the scales, they worked through four parts. They did just the one octave scale of the major scale, the right hand and left hand. They did the triad inversions, right hand and left hand the primary chord progression, also right hand and left hand, and then they only did the natural minor scale, each hand. So as you see, there are actually lots of sections in the scale binder that our students haven't tackled yet. So if you have already gone through the scale binder, then you can either go back and start it again, or you can start working on these newer sections um, just to really help you get better at the scales in your chords. If you're brand new to the scale binder, we're gonna start with just what we've tabbed here in the yellow. So the one octave scale, the triad inversions, the chord progression, and then the natural minor. And we like to try to do right hand and left hand. They don't have to be done at the same time, but just individually. And so once you kind of master that, then you can go back to the beginning of your binder and you can check off that you've done the C scale, right hand, the left hand. You can put the date you accomplished it or just put a check mark. Same thing with inversions. So you can kind of track your progress. Some students like to just work on the scales and then go back and do the inversions. Some like to finish everything in C major first and then move to the next. So um, that's how the binder's set up. And I'm also going to show you now how we would work through it. So I'm going to use the C major scale and the A minor as an example. Um, I have sticky tabs here. You can create these because sometimes students struggle with playing their inversions. And so we can utilize putting the sticky tabs actually on the piano, and I'll show you that when we get to it. Um, you can also use a dry erase marker. Some can use that on your piano. I don't wanna use it on these keys, but if you have a keyboard that has more of a plasticky key, you can totally use a dry erase marker. I would just test it first to make sure you can wipe it right off, but that also can help because you can label. We don't want to rely on labeling the piano notes, but it does help when you're first learning them. And then the students will get the feeling of the interval distance and be able to master it in no time. So let's just start on the C major scale. And when you look at the binder, I'll show you quickly, um, the finger numbers are written on there. And this is really important. That's part of learning the scale is actually playing the correct fingers. So up here, that's our right hand fingering, and this is our left hand fingering. When you get to the natural minor, they just have it written one time, so the numbers on top are gonna to be our right hand, the numbers on the bottom are gonna be our left hand. And then they'll give you the fingerings too for the inversions, um, but you'll figure that out just based on the interval distance you have to do. So let's get started on the C major scale. So with our right hands, we're gonna put our hand in C position, and it's our five finger C scale, but we're gonna go all the way up to the high C. And so the fingerings for the C major scale are one, two, three, cross your thumb under. One, two, three, four, five. Four, three, two, one, three, two, one. That's your C major scale. So you're always gonna cross your thumb underneath. So one more time, cross under. Cross your third finger over. That's your C major scale with the right hand. Then your left hand, same idea. It's gonna be the first five fingers going up and you'll cross your third finger over after your thumb. So five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. If you want to attempt to do them together, they just cross at different times, but it's really simple. You can totally do it. And that's our C major scale. You're gonna take basically those same fingerings and you can then play the A natural minor. So that would be on the top of the second page of your binder. It's the same idea. It's the same notes that are being played. You're just gonna start on an A. 
those fingerings are also listed. Sometimes the natural minor fingerings are going to be different, so you want to really take notice. Sometimes they're going to be the same. Um, use the fingerings they tell you, otherwise kiddos you're going to really struggle with it and you'll wonder why, so use the fingerings. Next thing we're going to go over are triad inversions. That is basically your chords. So that's the C major chord and then we invert it. So this is where our sticky notes come in handy. So you're going to take your little sticky notes and you can put down two C's. You'll put down two E's and then you'll put down two G's. So now you'll get to see the chords you're making and see how you're going to invert them. So the C chord, C, E, and G. And then basically what you're going to do is your thumb's going to leapfrog up to the next C. That's our first inversion, second inversion, and then back to root. And then coming back down, second inversion, first inversion, root. So there's only three choices in how we're going to play the chords because there's three notes. So it's just a matter of how we stack them. So root, first inversion, second inversion, root. Back to second inversion, first inversion, and root. And you do the same thing with your left hand. You don't have to move your sticky tabs. You actually can just slide over on the bench and just have your left hand do it. And then after a few days of that, take your little sticky notes off because you want to be able to play it without looking at sticky notes. You can save them for later because we'll reuse some of these. And then see if you can play them without. And that same idea works if you're using a dry erase marker. You can take, um, wipe it off after you're done, and then, let me get these sticky notes off, and then you can um, try it without having anything written on your keys. The last thing we're going to work on is the, what we call the primary chord progression. And that's your one, four, and five chord, all kind of played in one position. So our one chord is our C chord in the key of C. Then the four chord is an F chord. It's just inverted because we have F, A, and C. And we go back to our one chord and then we play what's called the 5-7, so it's a variation of the G chord, and go back to the one chord. And this is a pattern that you'll find throughout your scale binder. Right, and you kind of do this with your left hand. And if you want to, do them together. All right, that makes up a lot of songs that are out there, the one, four, and five chord. So we want to get good at um, our inversions, our chord progression and our scales because all of that is going to take us to the next level when we learn to play lead sheets and chord charts and just interpret music in general. So good luck on your scale journey. Um, continue through your binder. You start with the C major scale, but it gets a little trickier as we go. We get into sharps and flats, but it's all very uh, much something you can do because we're going to prepare you for each step of it. Thanks.